Hello. Um, we're here today with Clive Jennings from SKF Cooper and he's going to be talking us through best practice mounting procedures on an SKF Cooper roller bearing. Talk, Clive. Thank you very much Andy. So what we're going to go through Andy today is when your customers buy from you a Cooper spit bearing, inside each bearing is the assembly instructions. So this is what we're going to be going through today as a best practice. Okay. Okay. So we've got here my 50 mil demo unit and we start off by measuring the shaft for roundness and size in three or four different places. What sort of accuracy do we need to be measuring on that Clive? Okay, so it does tell you in the fitting instructions for your size of shaft what the accuracy is, but as a rule of thumb, you don't want to be plus anything and minus about two thou. Okay. Okay, if you're much more than that, the two halves of the inner races will touch and they won't clamp on the shaft properly. Okay, so this is to ensure safe fitting of the inner ring. Exactly, yeah. So it's quite a critical part um, that a lot of people don't do, but I would say it's worth taking the time to do it. Okay. So once we've established that our shaft is the correct size and it's round and parallel, we then want to lightly grease the shaft. Okay. This doesn't want to be a, a, a thick viscosity oil. Because a Cooper bearing has no adjustment, it's all preset and the clearances are preset. If we use too thick a grease, you can take away some of the clearance. Would the grease help prevent rust? and any fretting damage that, that might That's occur. exactly why we do it, Andy. Yeah, exactly right. those okay. two reasons. So once we have applied a, a small amount of oil to the shaft, we take our two halves of our inner ring, and you'll see on these that we have, one side has a black line and one side doesn't. This is so that you can match them up when you put them together. Okay, all of the Cooper bearing components will have identification markings on them and you'll see they're different numbers but they always match the half that they're with. Okay, so if you're assembling two bearings at the same time, you need to keep the components completely separate. Yeah, you can and in case you do mix them up, you will have the identification numbers to tell you that those two halves go together. Okay. I should mention that when you buy a bearing, that's a matched set and you shouldn't interchange any of the parts from one bearing with another. Okay, that's good, uh, good practice. Okay, so we're going to fit our races on the shaft. Ideally, what we're looking for when we get these on is that we want a nice, even gap. And you can see here that we've got a gap and then we've got less of a gap this side. So we're just gonna even that out. It doesn't have to be identical, but it is a best practice to make sure the gaps are even. As long as you have a gap on both sides, uh, it doesn't matter if you have a big gap and a little gap, as long as there's a gap. Okay, so that helps with, um, to be honest, I'm struggling to think why that. Okay, so the reason we do that, Andy, is when we make the bearing, we make it from round bar, and we, the final stage is to cut it, so it's not quite round. Okay. If you had one side touching, the edges would start to wear and chip. Right, I understand. So it's, again, a safety measure yeah. uh, to ensure best life. E exactly that, okay. yeah. So once we've got our inner race on and we're happy, we take then our clamping rings and we have two. And you'll see from here that there's a shoulder on one side and not the other. And this shoulder should be facing in. What we want to do is put then the splits on the clamping rings at 90 degrees to the split on the inner race. Does it matter which way round you put the collars on? Uh, well, you can do it either way, Andy, but I would personally, as is a male and female, so one half that you're screwing the screw into, I would mount that first on the top like I've done here. So as you rotate that round and you put the other half on, you're actually screwing the screws from the top and not the bottom. Okay. It just makes assembly a little bit easier. Again, you don't have to, it just makes your life a little bit easier. I also noticed that there was a slight rib on one side of the collar. Yeah, that's right. That's where the rollers run against on the roller and cage assembly. If you assemble it with the rib on the outside, you'll soon spot it because you won't be able to get your roller and cage assembly on later. Right, okay. 
So I'm just going to do these up slightly. Again, we're looking for a gap in each side on the clamping rings, but it's important that these clamping rings are seated. So we need to make sure we just give them a, a little tap with a dead blow mallet or a soft mallet to make sure they're seated. If not, when we tighten them up fully and they're not fully seated, when the machine runs, it can move and they'll be loose. Okay. Very important little tip, that one. Okay, so that's that side done. We're gonna do the other side. And the same process, exactly the same exactly again. Exactly the same repeated again. You make this look very easy, Clive. Well, one of the beauties of a, a Cooper variant, Andy, is that it is very simple to put together. The fact that there's nothing to adjust and no clearances to set makes it a very easy bearing to put together. So, again, just tighten those up slightly and I'm going to make sure they're seated. And then I'm going to give them their final tightness. You'll notice in the fitting instructions that for every size of screw that you're fitting, there is a, a torque setting on there to make sure you get the right torque on them. Okay. So at this point, Andy, I would measure the grease. And working that out, we have again with the fit instructions, your shaft side times speed gives you a DM rating. And that tells you whether you want a full pack, a three quarter pack, a half pack, or a quarter pack. And then in the catalog or in here, you'll see that that gives you a value for your size of bearings, how much weight of grease you want. Okay, so depending on the application that we use in this bearing in, we'll define which pack we need. Exactly. Okay. So generally for slower applications, you want more grease. For faster applications, you want a little less grease. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, once we've weighed our grease out, we're then going to fit our outer races into our cartridge halves. And you'll notice that the halves are slightly different. One has a locating pin and a grease nipple, and the other doesn't. Okay, and then on the races that are going to fit inside, you'll notice that one has a hole in. Which one goes in the top, which one goes in the bottom, Andy? Well, I think from common sense, the, the one with the hole in will go near the grease nipple. Yep, you're exactly right. So we make sure that we're fitting this one into the one with your grease nipple. One of the things you need to be careful of, as I said, is that a Cooper bearing has no adjustment. We need to make sure when we're fitting the outer races that the seating area is clean and free of any debris. We don't want any grit or dirt in there because it may affect the clearance that you have. Okay. So make sure it's clean, give it a wipe, and then all we do is slide it into position. Okay, nice and simple. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's slid into position. And then we take our other half and slide that into the bottom. We just want to make sure where our male and female halves, you'll notice that we have different angles on there that they will then fit together when you put the cartridge together. And again, just slide it in. Then we're gonna take the two halves of the cartridge. Obviously you can't always do this for some of the large size bearings, but we're going to then put the screws in. You can see at the moment I've got gaps in the cartridge and we just want to eliminate those gaps. So you're, at this point you are ensuring that the, the outer ring and the cartridge are correctly set together. Yeah, okay, so it's making sure that they're seated correctly. And also, just as a checkpoint for us, once we've screwed this together and we've eliminated the gaps in the cartridge, we know that when we come to fit the cartridge in position, if there's a gap, it's because we've done something slightly wrong, it's not seated correctly. Of course, yeah. So we'll just screw those in. And we can see now we have no gap on the cartridge. That's a fantastic best practice uh, idea to, to do as a, as a yeah. check. Yeah, it just makes sure you're getting the best life you can out of the bearing. I've just noticed these holes, Clive. What are yeah. they for? Okay, so this is our GR bearing, which is our fixed bearing, means grooved race. And these little screws that we need to tighten up at this point here, locate the GR outer race in position. 
Again, just do all those up. We know now then that this outer race is in the correct position. Okay. When we come to fit this cartridge now, it should be perfect. At this stage, we're going to fit the seals as well. And on this one, we've got felt seals. Felt seals come as our standard seal with the bearing. And they're free with every cartridge that you buy. And then you can buy extra seals afterwards. Okay. They come as one pack, one set of seals. And there's four little pieces of felt seal in each pack. Is there anything special that we need to do for those felt seals to fit them? Yeah, okay. So ideally, when we know we're going to fit a bearing, 24 hours before we fit them, we want to be soaking these felt seals in oil. Okay. Okay. Um, they're a more effective seal if they're wet. Obviously, not everybody does that. So if you can remember, at least when you start assembling the bearing, soak the seals for as long as you can. Okay. Okay, in this case we've already fitted them and with each felt seal they're slightly longer than they need to be so you will just have to trim them off slightly. If we're going to fit a triple labyrinth seal at this point you would fit it on the shaft as well so when we fit the cartridge it's in position. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to fit our roller and cage assembly. Uh, this is very easy on this particular design. It has a male, male and a female clip that go together. And it's just very easy. Just hold the two halves of the rollers and squeeze and it comes together. And then to remove, you'll see a little gap in there. You just twist the screwdriver and it comes apart. Very simple. Yep. So with the grease that we've measured out already, we'll take a little bit of grease and smear it on the inner race in here. And then as much grease as we can in between the rollers and the cages. You'll see there's some lovely deep pockets with this design to hold some of the grease, and then obviously on the inside of the bearing. So that's to ensure a correct EHL film on the bearing during operation. Exactly, where we want the grease is on the inner race and the rollers so we don't get any metal to metal contact. Okay. Any grease that we have left over, we can fill into the cartridge left afterwards, but you want to put as much grease as you can around the rolling elements. So we'll roll this into position, take our other half, and again we're just squeezing that together. Okay, so that's our bearing fitted to the shaft. Excellent. Next step is to fit the cartridge. What we're going to do here then is take our bottom half of the cartridge, we just sit it on top of the bearing and rotate it into position. And this is exactly the same procedure for the fixed type or the expansion type? Yes, the, the only difference is with these GR screws that we adjusted earlier. Okay. So at this point now we would take whatever grease that we've got left and fill it in the holes of the cartridge and maybe in the top half as well. We're then going to fit the top half of the cartridge on and because we adjusted it earlier and put it together, we'll know when we screw this down, if we've got a gap, it's because it's not quite seated correctly. So we don't want to be hitting it and trying to get it adjusted on there. We know we just have to take it off and put it back on again to make sure it's seated. Okay. Again, we would do the screws up with the correct uh, torque rating for each screw. Which was given in the instructions that we spoke about earlier. Exactly, yeah. Then all we have left to do is put on the pedestal cap. And as with all the other components within the bearing and housings, you have identification marks to tell you which half goes with which and how they go together. So you can't get it the wrong way around. Exactly. So once this is on, most people think you're finished there, Andy. But do you know what one last step might be? Is it to do with the misalignment of the, of the, of the bearing? Absolutely. That's perfect. Yeah, absolutely right. So. We're just going to do these two cap screws up finger tight and then if possible we want to 
allow the machine to rotate for 30 seconds or so, so this can find its center. Okay. There's two and a half degrees of misalignment in any direction with the Cooper bearing, so five degrees in total, and we want that to find its own center. Then, once it's found its center, we tighten it up. If we can't run the machine, we will, what we want to be doing is at least rotating this by hand, five, 10, 15 revolutions, so it finds its centre. So by finding its natural centre, it gives the bearing the best chance of a long, prolonged lifetime. Exactly right. And there Fantastic. you have it. Fantastic. Thank you, Clive. Thanks, Andy.